What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to build this pretty massive Murphy bed cabinet. It includes some awesome little touches like Alexa controlled LED lighting on the inside of the cabinet, as well as these collapsible nightstands that get out of the way when the Murphy bed's not in use, but are easy to fold up when the bed is being used. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's go ahead and get started with the build. So this project is basically just a whole bunch of plywood. So I first started by breaking down the sheets into their individual pieces. This Murphy bed hardware is a kit from Rockler and they have super detailed instructions, including a cut list for all the pieces you'll need for the project. I'll also upload the SketchUp model I created with all of the pieces laid out in case you wanna see that. So to build this queen size Murphy bed, I used five sheets of three quarter inch Pure Bond maple plywood but I have a bunch left over. Actually, I'm gonna use my leftover pieces to build a flip top tool stand in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. And two projects from one set of materials is always nice. I started by breaking down all the pieces on the table saw, but if you don't have a table saw, you could definitely have the home center break down the sheets into more manageable chunks for you. That said, the measurements on this project are fairly precise, and most home centers only guarantee cutting within about an eighth of an inch of what you ask them for. So for that reason, a circular saw and straight edge, or even better, a track saw would make life a lot easier when building this project. Speaking of the track saw, next I could start cutting all the boards to their final length. Most of these pieces are still fairly huge, so even after breaking the plywood sheets down, a track saw is probably the best tool for the job here. I like to cut my parts on top of one of these foam insulation panels, that way I can cut through the plywood and not have to worry about damaging my workbench below. When cutting these pieces to length, I'd first trim off the factory edge from one end, making sure it was nice and square, and then mark the length using my tape measure and cut the piece to final size. As you can see, the track saw makes pretty quick work of all these cuts and is really just such a versatile tool. If you don't have space for a table saw, for example, you can accomplish most of the functionality with a track saw and pack it away when you're done. Once all the parts were to their final size, I could start getting them assembled. I used a combination of dominoes and pocket screws to assemble this project, but dowels would be another great option. I don't think biscuits would provide quite enough strength here, so I'd really recommend a doweling jig like the ones Rockler makes. They're cheap and super useful, and I'll link to the one I recommend in the video description below. The first pieces to connect were the upper headboard to the top of the bed cabinet, and then the lower headboard to the bottom of the bed cabinet. I cut about 10 mortises into each piece and then connected them using dominoes and glue. On the first glue up, I used clamps, but this was kind of a pain and required a bunch of clamps. So on the second glue up, I wised up and clamped the pieces in place temporarily, then added countersunk screws to hold the joint together while it dried. This only required one or two clamps, and these screws will never be seen since they'll be either facing the floor or the ceiling in the finished bed cabinet. And pocket holes would have also worked great here. After getting the pieces glued up, I used the straw trick to get rid of the glue squeeze out on those inside corners, and it just works so well. I wish I had known about this trick when I started woodworking. Once those glue ups had some time to dry, I cut more mortises into the ends of the assemblies to attach those parts to the side panels. I marked out my mortise locations using a T-square and then cut them using the domino. Using the same T-square, I marked out the corresponding locations on the side panels and then cut in the mortises on both side panels. Before gluing everything together, I needed to add the threaded inserts which hold the mounting brackets on the inside face of the bed cabinet, and this is what the actual bed frame itself mounts to. Once again, I just referenced the plans from Rockler here, marking out the locations, then drilling the holes and threading in the inserts using an Allen wrench. Before I could finally glue up all the parts, I realized I didn't have clamps long enough to stretch from one end of the bed cabinet to the other, so I drilled some pocket holes along the back edges of all the panels, and I made sure to avoid the mortises and I spaced the pocket holes about every six to eight inches. The last thing to do before the glue up was to sand the inside faces of the panels since they were much easier to sand as individual pieces than as an entire bed cabinet. Finally, it was time for the glue up, which I tackled in two halves. First, I glued one of the side panels to the top and bottom assemblies, adding dominoes and pocket screws, and you can see how the pocket screws kind of negate the need for clamps, which is really super convenient. None of these pocket holes will be visible in the final piece, so there's no need to fill them later either, which is also nice. Next, I flipped the whole assembly over, which I detailed on my Instagram stories as basically impossible to do by myself in my shop, and then I repeated the whole process gluing on the other side panel. While that glue up dried, I could work on the other parts of the Murphy bed, the next of which was the doors. The doors were already cut to final size, but I wanted to make these huge panels look like a door and two drawers to make the Murphy bed look a little bit more like a cabinet and less like a Murphy bed. 
To achieve this effect, I cut in two shallow grooves with my track saw on each of the door panels. And once I add faux handles to each of these sections, you'll kind of see how it'll give the illusion of a set of drawers below a large door. The door handles will function to help lower and raise the Murphy bed, and the drawer handles will just be for show. The last pieces to work on before applying finish were the nightstands, which are just two pieces of plywood stacked together. I attached the pieces with glue and brad nails, and then clamped them up and let the glue dry. Once the glue dried, I trimmed the edges flush at the table saw, and then added a chamfer to all the edges over the router table. Finally, I sanded everything up to 180 grit off camera, and then I could get to finishing. I sprayed on a water-based polyurethane on this project, and this was kind of an ideal project for spraying since there's so much surface area on this piece. And while I'm applying finish, let's talk about one of the sponsors of this week's project, Purebond Plywood. I really love using Purebond. It's a formaldehyde-free hardwood plywood that's made in the USA, actually right down the road from me here in North Carolina, and it's just super high quality. I've used Purebond a ton in the past with great results, and basically anytime I'm using plywood on a project, especially for furniture, I'm using Purebond. Purebond is formaldehyde free, uses soy-based glues, and is available exclusively at Home Depot, and I'll have a link in the video description below if you'd like to learn more. I applied a few coats of finish to the back and edges of the door panels, but I needed to mask off part of the front of the door panels as I wanted to paint those areas. After masking those sections, I applied a few coats of finish to the front of the door panels as well. Once the polyurethane dried, I masked off one of the faux drawer fronts and sprayed on a few coats of paint. And after letting the paint dry for about an hour or so, I removed the masked off sections from the first door and was really happy with how crisp the lines were. When I went to remove the tape on the second door, this is where what I'm calling the paint saga started. What? Oh no. Ah, oh, shh. I evidently forgot to cut away part of my painter's tape before spraying the paint, and this left me with a strip of unpainted wood. To compound this error, I used a two-year-old can of spray paint to paint those parts and used every bit of the paint I had. As it turns out, this paint and color are no longer in production, so I couldn't just go buy some more. So after having a bit of a mild panic attack, I decided I'd just add an accent stripe down the center of the drawer fronts, which would give it kind of a cool look and also cover up my mistake. So soldiering on, I applied a few coats of red spray paint I had on hand to the other drawer fronts, quickly realizing there was something wrong with the spray paint cans I had, probably due to age, and had to go out and buy more paint the following day. Finally, with both of the main colors applied and mostly dry, I masked off my accent stripe, which I decided to make diagonal, and then sprayed on a few coats of white paint. Now, note how I said mostly dry? Well, that came back to bite me a few hours later. And so the paint saga continues. So I got the coat of red on the lower kind of drawer front here, looking great. I applied it, let it dry for like seven hours until it was nice and smooth and you know not sticky at all. And then went ahead and taped off the section for this diagonal stripe and sprayed on a coat, completely ignoring the instructions on the can that say to either apply another coat within an hour or to wait 48 hours. I figured, what's the worst that can happen? Well, this is the worst that can happen. Basically, since that red coat had not completely dried, when I went to apply the white coat over it, there were essentially just too many solvents at play, and that caused this top white coat to shrink and crack and give it that kind of antiqued crackle effect that was so popular 10 years ago, but is definitely not the effect I'm looking for on the front of these Murphy bed doors. So what I'm gonna have to do now is let this completely dry, give it another day or two, sand it all back here just in the stripe section, and then repaint. And basically this little paint job has turned into what is essentially gonna be a five-day process. But I live in I learn and hopefully by me showing these mistakes you guys will not make the same mistakes on your project all right let's get to it before attaching the bed cabinet to the wall I needed to remove the baseboard trim from that section of the wall so that the cabinet would sit flush with the wall and you'll also notice that I left off the quarter round here when I was installing that laminate flooring in a previous video and I'm going to add that after finishing this Murphy bed to remove the baseboard trim I first used an oscillating multi-tool to cut a vertical line in the baseboards and then I cut the caulk at the top edge of the baseboards with a utility knife, and then used this nifty tool called the trim puller to remove the baseboard. And I'll link to this tool in the video description below. It just made the process super easy and didn't damage the wall at all. After removing the baseboard, I could move the bed cabinet into the room, which was no simple task considering how huge this thing was at this point. And after getting it into the room, I flipped the whole cabinet upright and slid it into place. And I went ahead and attached the mounting brackets for the bed frame using the included Allen bolts. And then I could start laying out the locations of the lag screws which attached the cabinet to the wall. 
There are three lag screws in both the lower and upper headboards, and these absolutely have to hit the studs behind the cabinet. I marked out my stud locations and then marked a location about three inches up from the inside edges of the top and bottom cabinet, and then pre-drilled a hole and drove in the lag screws using an impact driver. And you can see that my wall isn't totally flat, but the cabinet was already super secure. And as if the lag screws weren't enough, Rockler also includes these brackets which attach to the top of the cabinet. And there's a pin that goes into the wooden top and also an Allen bolt that attaches through the inside of the top to make sure the bracket is connected permanently to the top. And next there are two lag screws that go into the stud and then finally two more lag screws that go into the top. So needless to say, this thing is not going anywhere considering there are three of these brackets to install. With the cabinet in place, I could move on to getting the bed frame assembled. And while I'm assembling the frame, let's talk about one of the sponsors of this week's video, Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Now, I used a ton of Rockler products during this build, obviously the most important of which was the Murphy bed kit, but I also used the glue brush kit, bench cookies, and T-Track clamps, and I'll have links to all the items I used in the video description below. Rockler's got tons of great tools and accessories for your next build, and they're always coming up with new and innovative ideas to help make your woodworking more efficient and more enjoyable. Thanks again to Rockler for sponsoring this build. Once the frame was assembled, I added some of the wooden slats, and you'll need to leave a few rows of these slats off to give you access to hardware later, which I somehow did backwards, which led to some frustration in the next couple of steps. Next, I attached the pistons to each side of the bed frame and then dropped the bed frame onto the brackets, which was the moment I realized I'd left the wrong slats off. That was pretty awkward. I attached the safety covers over the pivot points and then attached the pistons to the brackets, once again realizing that I had left off the wrong slats. With the pistons installed, the frame was now under pressure, so things got a little bit more tricky, and a second set of hands would definitely have been super useful here. The next piece to add to the build was this stop block, which sets how far the top of the bed frame sits inside the cabinet. I used a few scraps of plywood for this and went ahead and installed it with the bed frame out of the way, getting the location dialed in, and then removed the stop block, added a box to keep the frame out of the cabinet, reinstalled the block, and then let the frame hit the block. And you want the frame to be nice and plumb here, which mine was. I decided I wanted to add an LED light strip inside the cabinet, since a nightstand light wouldn't really help with the cabinet sides in the way, and I really should have done this before installing the bed frame, but anyway, I used one of the light strips from American Green Lights, the same ones I used in my shop, which I needed to wire up with an electrical box, but any standard LED light strip would work great here. I attached the strip to the top and decided to make it a little extra fancy by plugging it into a smart plug and using an extra Alexa dot I won from Instructables to control it. Alexa, turn on the Murphy bed lights. And there wasn't really a convenient spot to put a switch, so I figured this would be pretty much perfect, and it's quite the luxury to be able to turn off your lights when you're laying in bed without having to move a muscle. Next, I could install the nightstands, and I used these collapsible brackets and attached them to the nightstands with a few pocket screws. Attaching the brackets to the bed cabinet was a little bit more tricky, and I probably should have removed the nightstand to do this. I also mounted the nightstands at a height that blocked one of the outlets, which is obviously super inconvenient for anyone who wants to charge multiple devices while sleeping. And I actually need to go back and readjust these brackets as the nightstands don't collapse all the way due to the brackets not being perfectly parallel with each other. With pretty much everything done on the bed except for the doors, I could go back and deal with that crackly white paint. And I started trying to remove the paint with a card scraper, but it was pretty tough. It would have worked, and my card scraper probably needs a little bit of a sharpening. But I figured this would be the perfect job for my new Rotex sander, and it was. The paint was still a little bit sticky, so I had to replace the sanding pads a few times, but it removed all of the paint in about three minutes. With the paint removed, I remasked the area and applied a few coats of white paint, trying to apply lighter coats this time so things dried a little bit faster. And this worked extremely well, and I got basically perfect results, except for that stupid bug that landed in the finish after the last coat. Why does that always happen? And after the paint dried a little bit, I could remove the painter's tape, and there is just very little as satisfying as clean paint lines. You just gotta love it. Also, you might notice that the red paint has a bit of a weird texture, and that's because I knocked down the gloss with 400 grit sandpaper before applying the white paint. And I'm gonna go back and add some paste wax once the red fully dries to give it a nice matte look. Once the paint was dry, I could install the drawer poles, and this was a pretty simple process. I just needed to make sure everything lined up correctly, and I probably should have done this before applying finish so I could cover up any errors, but luckily everything worked out. To install the doors onto the Murphy bed frame, the kit includes these little clips which need to be added to the backside of the door panels. 
and the clips are attached with a few included screws and the locations are specified in the plans. Once the clips were installed, I could drop the door panels into place and get them adjusted so that there was an even reveal around all of the edges. And you can see how the final placement of the panels gives the illusion that this is a cabinet and not a Murphy bed, especially with those drawer pulls added. After getting the doors in their final location, the door panels are attached to the bed frame with some longer screws through the inside of the bed frame. Finally, I could add those slats I had left off earlier, install the mattress supports, and the Murphy bed was finally done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this project. This was a ton of work. I ran into quite a few challenges, but I am really happy with the way this whole thing came together. Obviously, there were a lot of mishaps during this build, the paint saga probably being the most notable of which, but there were also some things that happened off camera that didn't really pertain to the project, but still did happen. For instance, before I cut all of the mortises into these side panels and into the ends of the tops, I hit one of the screws that connected the top of the headboard with the domino, which chipped the carbide on the bit, making all of those mortises slightly slightly smaller and slightly less deep, which I didn't realize until I went to glue everything up and it was uh, stressful to say the least. I also rushed through a lot of things and made some mistakes when following the plans, like putting those slats on the bed frame in the wrong order, which made things a lot more challenging when I went to assemble this whole kit. And then last, the kind of cherry on top of this frustration Sunday, when we went to close the Murphy bed for the first time, it wouldn't close all the way. And that's because as it turns out, this Murphy bed kit supports a maximum mattress thickness of 10 inches and just by luck, our mattress that we had in this guest room is 13 inches thick. So after all this, I'm gonna have to go out and buy a new mattress. Again, that's on me not paying attention to the specs on the kit and all that stuff. But anyway, I worked through all the problems. I got it done. I'm really happy with the way this thing looks. I really think that paint is a very cool addition. It's something I don't do very frequently just because painting can be so frustrating, which I really learned during this project. But I think I also learned a lot about painting, how to do it correctly. The big thing for me is just having more patience but yeah so hopefully you guys enjoyed this one i do have these new t-shirts available through teespring they're available on all kinds of different merch including women's t-shirts uh, coffee mugs obviously men's t-shirts all kinds of stuff so i'll have a link to that in the video description as well as in the cards also in the video description will be links to all of the tools and materials i used in this build in case you want to build this for yourself also if this is your first time here go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos i put out new project videos like this pretty much every week and last i have added that YouTube sponsor functionality. It's now called, I guess, the membership functionality, but that allows you to support me a little further. You get all kinds of behind the scenes content and goodies, and it's just a really fun way to interact with my kind of super core fan audience. So hopefully you guys will check that out and hopefully you enjoyed this video. And I guess until next week, happy building guys.